Hey, it's Plumber Tom. Thank you for watching my videos. I wanted to let you know really quickly about some awesome resources that I have for you as you're trying to learn. I have free practice tests that you can take if you're preparing for a state test. I have preparation courses that you can take that will guide you through that process if you're getting ready for a test. I have other courses that can help you in learning the plumbing trade. So make sure to check out those resources. You can find a link in the comments below. When you participate in those courses, you're helping me to be able to create more content. So I really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching. In 802.3.1, we get this specific definition of what is an air gap. Let me read it for you. It says air gap. The air gap between the indirect waste pipe and the flood level rim of the waste receptor shall be not less than twice the effective opening of the indirect waste pipe. So we get this formula. Air gap equals two times the diameter of the indirect waste pipe or the pipe that's dumping into the floor drain or floor sink. Here's an example. We have a condensate drain. How big are condensate drains? Typically three quarter of an inch. So we take our three quarters times it by two. Our air gap should be one and a half inches from the end of our indirect waste pipe or the condensate drain to the floor drain is dumping into one and a half inches. Now that gap can get quite large. Let's say I'm running a two inch drain off of a commercial kitchen sink. Two times two is gonna be a four inch gap. And with that much space between the indirect waste pipe and the floor sink, sometimes it's hard to control that flow. It can run out all over the place when you're clear up four inches off of the drain. So let's talk for a minute about what we can do about that. As we consider the installation of this air gap, we have, say, a floor sink and an indirect waste pipe that's going to be dumping into that sink. Now, if we follow the flow of water in the drain, it's going to hug the bottom of the drain until it comes to the end, and then it starts to swirl and hug the sides of the pipe. When it comes out of the pipe, it comes out in this big flare with water that's going to not go in a straight line, but it's going to move out. And many times, if we have a big air gap, because of the size of our indirect waste pipe, it's gonna spill out and flood over our waste receptor and that can make quite a watery mess. So what can we do to eliminate that problem? The solution to this has a lot to do with understanding how water works. Water sticks to water and it likes to hold on to things until it can't anymore. So what if we were to take the end of that pipe and just cut an angle on it? Say we just take a hacksaw or whatever and cut a nice, clean, smooth angle on the discharge point of that indirect waste pipe. What is going to happen when the water runs through there? Well, here's the amazing thing about water. It's going to flow like it usually does to the end of the drain. It's going to start following the walls, but it's going to stick to itself into the walls until the very last second. And with that beveled cut, that angle on the pipe, it will actually create a relatively straight stream out the end of that indirect waste pipe. You can control and direct that flow by just cutting an angle on the end of the pipe. This is a great trick of the trade. You should put this in your back pocket. And remember, if you're ever doing an air gap, and especially if you're having trouble controlling the flow, just cut an angle on it on the end of that pipe, whatever kind of pipe you're dealing with. Make sure your air gap is the correct height above the receptor but you should be able to control pretty well the water coming from that stream. That said, have a look at this drawing. Do you see the angles that are cut onto these pipes? They're using that technique to control that flow of water and direct it right into the floor sink. Now let's contrast that with 802.3.2, where we get the definition of the air break. Air breaks. <laughs> It says an air break shall be provided between the indirect waste pipe and the trap seal of the indirect waste receptor. The indirect waste pipe can be just stuffed in below the flood level rim. Here's an example in a floor sink or floor drain, but even more common, we're going to see a stand pipe, like we mentioned before, a washing machine with the hose stuffed down into there. Now let's consider for a minute what happens if the drain backs up. Well, the drain waste is going to come out. It's going to come out of the wall, but it's not going to go into the washing machine because it'll overflow out of that standpipe. And that's where we get our protection. We don't want all that 
drain waste in our washing machine, it'd be real hard to get that cleared. And we don't want that in our clothes. So having that indirect waste, even as an air brake, is a protection. <laughs> <laughs>